Hi, I'm Vivian the Knitter. And I'm Allison the Crocheter, and you're listening to Keep Calm and Carry Yarn. Thank you so much for joining us for episode 40 of Keep Calm and Carry Yarn, a knitting and crocheting podcast brought to you by me, Vivian, and my daughter, Allison. I'm coming at you from New Hampshire. And I'm recording from Edinburgh, Scotland. Hello, everybody. Hi. Hope everybody's Welcome staying warm. Little... It's cold here. Yeah. Oh, it, it's cold here, too? <laughs> Not as cold, probably. No. It, it's in the teens today, so that's pretty cold. In in Fahrenheit. Yes, so I don't know what that is. In, it's minus something. I don't either. <laughs> and it's I, I live in a place that doesn't use Fahrenheit. <laughs> Um, so today we have one special thank you to a Ravelry user who is Katie and her Ravelry name is High Fiber Co. As she commented on, we tried to do sort of a thread on our Ravelry group for each episode for anybody who's listening to the audio only version. If they want to comment on anything we've said on the episode, the best way to do that is on Ravelry. Mm-hmm. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, obviously there's the comment section on YouTube, but so Katie said hi, and she said that she's coming to Edinburgh for the yarn festival. Very she's coming exciting. from the States and well, she's, well, she's coming for her honeymoon, I think, uh-huh. she's coming to Scotland, yeah. but yeah. happens to be during the yarn festival. So we will both be there. I think that's the first time we're saying it on the, is it the first time we're saying no, it on the podcast? Maybe not. No, we're not. No, it's not. Okay. <laughs> well, this is the official <laughs> announcement. Consider this the press release. <laughs> Allison and Vivian will be at Edinburgh Yarn Festival 2019. Yep. Just on the Friday, though. <laughs> yeah, just on the Friday. So if you're there, come say hi. It's, it's coming up soon. Tickets go on sale soon, or they've already gone on sale by the time this goes out. I don't know. So hello, Katie. Hi, Katie. Hopefully we'll see uh, you in Edinburgh. <laughs> yeah. So I just wanted to say hi to – a special hi to, like, also to just – New listeners, any new listeners that we might have acquired? I know we've got gotten quite a bit of new subscribers in the past few days. Um, we've already done our little bit of introduction, but generally speaking, we're an audio-only podcast. We also publish on YouTube where you can sort of see pictures to go along with us chatting, so we don't really record any video content for the most part. It's just audio. and No, because sometimes I'm sitting in my pajamas. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, we, we don't try our best to, to look our best when we're recording these because we don't have to. No, because it's, it's, uh, it's like a radio. You don't see it. And I would say our brand of podcast, we're very much just sort of casual chatting. And if, if you want to go about your daily business feeling like you're just catching up with some friends, that's that's us. So have a listen to us while you're crafting or cleaning the house or doing dishes on the lawn <laughs> yeah yeah on your commute we do talk a little bit about our crafting yeah that, <laughs> that's what i mean like you know <laughs> we chat about lots of things okay let's do our buzzfeed quiz yeah so buzzfeed quiz this is soothing quiz will give you something to be grateful for I'm not really sure what I expected. I don't know. I just took it just for the heck of it. There are some pretty pictures in there. Yeah, it is. The pictures in it are very soothing. Uh-huh. It's like, pick, pick a sunset, choose a field, choose a forest. Like, yeah, and they're all just like rainy pretty scene. pictures. Choose a yeah. snowy scene. Choose a cat dog friendship. <laughs> just like pretty pictures of things. Um, so, like, that was all very beautiful photos and all that and then the thing that it gave me was modern health care the existence of dental care and antibiotics is a reason to be happy uh, so that's what i meant to be grateful for i got literacy and libraries being literate is a wonderful privilege and libraries are extremely important i agree to I both that like, yeah i mean i also am grateful for modern health care but in terms of a quiz, I feel like it's a really personality weird. quiz, <laughs> the literary thing would fit me more. But I don't know how they I came up with the, the answer. It's probably completely random. <laughs> <laughs> That's my guess. Probably. Let's see how many of the same things we picked. Okay. Choose a sunset. I picked the top right. 
Oh, I picked the bottom left, the one over the ocean. Uh, and it's like very cotton candy, pink and yes. pink and pink, pink and candy. blue. That's <laughs> like, what is that color? <laughs> I like the one that I picked because it goes right down from like a really deep orange mm-hmm. to like more of a deep blue. Anyways, choose a field. I picked the daisies. I picked the bottom left, which is just a grassy just grass, field. high grass. High grass, yeah. But it looked like there's a bit of trees in the distance or something. Yes. Yeah. I, I, w- I kind of liked the daisy one too, but then it made me think of bees. So <laughs> I didn't like You do it. have a phobia about bees. Choose uh, a rainy scene, scene. I liked the one that's through a windshield and you see the traffic lights like blurry in the rain. I picked the flowers again. <laughs> Snowy scene? I picked the the city park with the park benches. Yeah, me too. Oh, so that's one similar one. <laughs> what about river? The river, I chose the wide river with the mountains in the background. The one, the, the bottom right. They they all have mountains. I don't know what I'm saying. The bottom right one, <laughs> where, you, where you can right. see the sky, oh, okay. the sky I picked and the clouds the reflected in left, the where it's in, the rivers in the valley. You can see the little bit peak of sun. It looks, it looks like a tropical shining. jungle. Like uh, island. I wouldn't say it looks tropical. Does it? Maybe not, maybe not tropical, but it looks it looks. I like the sun peeking through just that one side. Mm. And then about the cat dog. I picked the one doing the headbutt. Yeah, me too. Because they're definitely friends. <laughs> yeah. Although oh, the the second the second one I nearly picked was the beagle with the little cat, like the, the cat sleeping the next to it, snoozing. Just some, Nice yeah. companionship, yeah. And then the watercolor I picked was the blue one. Uh, I picked the purple one. Mm. I thought you might pick the blue, but uh, forest scene. I think I picked the bottom left. Mm, I picked the top left. <laughs> well, so uh, we didn't I, pick. We really didn't pick anything the same, other than the cat dog. The the cat and dog and and the and, snow and. and the snow yeah, yeah so right well modern healthcare. there you go <laughs> well what i will say is it is different having lived in america and then moving here and i mean we, we just uh, i just make use of the nhs since i paid for that with my visa um and just the difference between like even so how far are you supposed to get a pap smear once a year, would you say? Well, no. They, yeah, see that they they just came out with new guidelines. I think it's like is one, it less often now. It's less often now, yeah. But okay, because yeah, so I feel like I was always like in my head it was once a year. I mean, I have something else that needs to be checked once a year as well. But then it came here and they're like, oh no, like Pap smear once every three years. And then the other thing that I needed to get checked, they they sort of looked at me funny and, and said, <laughs> no, just come back in two years. Like so. <laughs> You know, over medicated in the U.S. I guess, and and even with the dentistry, I I've been to the dentist twice now since I've lived here, and each time it was just a routine exam. Took the actual sitting in the chair portion less than five minutes in out. No, no cleaning. No cleaning. Yeah. So I mean, the dentist is very impressed by, by my teeth. Like every time, <laughs> he's just like, looks great. If you have any, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I've, I've booked myself in for a cleaning in six months. So it'll be having like 18 months without it. And I feel like they've not recommended it because I, I compare like my teeth versus Sam's teeth. And I'm like, Sam, like he obviously needs the cleaning every six months. Whereas I obviously, I don't obviously need the cleaning. So I, I feel like I'm going to feel silly when I go in six months and be like, I'm here for my scale and polish. And they're going to look at me and be like, Scale what? Polish what? But I'm, I'm, I'll just have to say I'm an American. I just, I just need it to feel clean. <laughs> yes, so. I, I kind, I think I kind of drilled that into you guys. <laughs> Oral hygiene, yeah. <laughs> I'm not very scared of the dentist, so. Well, all, all but one of you is actually good about going to the dentist, and you know the whole flossing and everything. So, mm-hmm. yeah. So at least I, I was, I did my three quarters <laughs> of my job. <laughs> uh, this is what I mean by just having a chat. <laughs> Let's talk about flossing, the proper way to floss. <laughs> um, 
so now that you've gotten to know a little bit about us. <laughs> um, so before we got into some of our normal crafty content, our schedule programming, I uh, wanted to bring up something that's been going around the crafting community that you probably already know what I'm about to say. It's to do with diversity and as well racism within the crafting community. And I think just in, in general, I say within the crafting community and... I think part of it, it is to do with context within crafting, but also remembering that this is something that affects people within the crafting community, even outside their crafting lives. Obviously, it's just our lives. I don't know. I, I posted something on Instagram. I don't know if there was anything you wanted to add. No, what you posted, it was all you. It was, it was very well written, though you did sign my name to it. Um oh. <laughs> from both of uh, us, I, but I, you're, I, you're yeah. better at the words than I am. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, it's... I just wanted to, to acknowledge it on, on the podcast, and it's one of those funny things that I think the two of us, at least, you know, from, unless you've not told me something about your life, we've been lucky enough that nothing has so greatly affected us in terms of racism or, or discrimination that it has affected, like nothing has affected our lives so greatly in that way, other than being trivially, trivial annoyances mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and maybe very brief It's like, it's never put us in, in danger. It's never put, yeah, it's not, nothing's ever put us in danger. Like nothing's really, I, I even feel like sometimes I talk to some of my friends to, to, you know, one of my sisters even, and the experiences that they've had have been more frustrating than my own. I think a lot of... More nuisances than anything else. Yeah, nuisances, but obviously I, I don't want to minimize what that is. It's in terms of your day-to-day -day and in terms of... Oh, I say your, I mean, for those small things that have happened to us to, to the day-to-day, -day, there's not really anything that comes up and nothing that we notice. And the stuff that does happen, it's... Yeah, it's it's annoying in the moment and it's only when you sort of think about it being a symptom of a larger problem mm -hmm. and sometimes it's hard to think in big pictures like that well I i'm i'm grateful that society has changed whereas the the majority of people um well you know the, the majority meaning white people are acknowledging that there is a problem when i was growing up um racism and prejudice was a lot more blatant and it was just something that we dealt with we just either you let it roll off your back or you let or it just eats you alive and so the way i i was brought up was like just keep keep your head low and just you know don't rock the boat don't rock the boat uh, do your own, do your thing, you know, make sure you, 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 as a child, you know, do well in school. Don't worry about what the other kids are doing and that kind of stuff. So it doesn't surprise me that it's still happening, but I think it's, it happens. I don't know if it happens to a lesser degree than it, it did when I was a kid, but certainly I, I, think, I think, I think at least in the school setting, it's, it's happening less. Because what you experienced at school was a lot less than what I experienced in school. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think maybe we've gotten to the point where it's 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 all happening by degrees, and so whereas now we're asking people to not just think about those things that you call like you you called it sort of being more blatant the particular incident that happened that has sort of kicked this whole thing up is not necessarily what I would call blatant in that maybe 20 years ago, 10 years ago, it wouldn't have caused such an uproar. Mm -hmm. But whereas now people are more sensitive to things and I don't think sensitive in, in a bad way in that they're being overly sensitive, but mm -hmm. just sensitive in that, that you know, they're aware. more they're people, aware. they're aware yeah. of it. Yeah. It's on your radar. It's on more people's radar, not just, you know, people of color, it's on white people's mm -hmm. radar and, and whatnot. And yeah. And I do think what, what I said in my post that words have powers and, and how you say things starts to define how you think about things and, and to, to, yeah, I don't know. 
<laughs> much more eloquent when I've got time to write things out. <laughs> uh, so. I mean, yeah, we, we could talk about it for ages. But instead, let's talk about our knitting and crochet. Yay! Because that's what that's everyone's what, here for. Yep, that's what we're all here for. <laughs> so you have a bunch of whips, don't you? I do. So I am lining up the whips because I'm going away on a ski holiday on Saturday. Which you're not going to be but skiing. I don't ski. <laughs> yes, I, do, I don't ski. I don't really have any desire to ski. I've never really had a desire to learn how to ski. And rather than be to spend the money on doing something I don't really feel like doing, I'm just going to go and relax and enjoy myself and drink wine, read books, and crochet. Yay. So I want to make sure I have enough projects with me. So it's always done better is... to bring too much than too little. But yeah, like, I feel like I've got one complicated project that I could bring with me, and not, and even if that was the only thing I brought, I definitely wouldn't finish it. Uh-huh. But I, because it's complicated and fiddly, I don't want it to be the only thing that I bring. So I'll start with one of the simple things, or I've got two simple things. Um, so the first thing I'm doing is a baby blanket and that's just a, a cotton baby blanket and it's for, um, a baby, a baby, (laughs) Sam's, one of his best mates is going to have a baby in March. Oh, wow. So exciting. One of the, our first like friends who are intentionally having a baby. <laughs> yeah, it was planned, which is a bit crazy, but I guess reaching that age. So, uh, Sophie, um, cl- kindly had posted a batch of cotton yarn that she was wanting rid of just to de-stash, uh, and offered it up to a few people just for the cost of shipping. So I saw that and I saw some cotton yarn and I was like, well, that's, that would be good for baby blanket uh-huh. because I'd been thinking about doing it, but I, I probably, if that yarn was on offer, I would have just forgotten about it or put it off and not actually started it in time for the baby. Uh-huh. So I managed to get some pink box yarn and it's in, there's a light pink, a dark pink, a light blue, a dark blue and a off white. So I've decided not to use the pink. So I'm just using, oh, wait. No, there's a pink, a light pink, a light blue, a dark blue, an off-white, and a gray. A light gray, that's what it is. So I've decided not to use the pink now that I've, I can see them all together. And then I've got some orange left from the puffin that I did. Mm-hmm. So there's the orange, and then there's the the bright, not bright, bright yellow, but more of a, a yellow color. I think it's called strong yellow. Oh. Okay. So I'm just going to do chunky stripes going from the orange, yellow, light gray, white, light blue, dark blue. So and no pattern? No pattern. Just I'm starting off with just a linen stitch. And then I, I'm not sure if I'm going to do linen stitch all the way through. That might be a bit boring. I might do different stitches for each stripe just to make it like te- more textural. Because mm-hmm. it's a simple, simple stripes. Or do, like, linen stitch, and then a different stitch, and then linen stitch, and then a different stitch. I haven't really decided. Which one is linen stitch? Linen stitch is, it's, so you do a single crochet, and then a chain, and that chain skips over a stitch, and then you do another single crochet, and then a chain, and a single crochet. And then in the next row, you do a single crochet into the chain spaces. Mm -hmm. And... Because you've done it like that, you you can see the distinct V's of the. Oh, I see. So how your the base, the foundation row? How is the foundation row done? It's just just chains. Oh, and then you do a single crochet and skip one and and like that. Yes, yeah, so oh, you okay. skip a chain rather than skip a stitch. I see. That makes sense. Yeah. So it's, it's really simple. Um, but I, I, I do really like that stitch, actually, even though it's really simple. I, I think that looks really cool when it's striped. I like how the, it, it, it zigzags a little bit in the stripes. Right? Doesn't it do like a... Oh, if you do one row in one color and one row in uh-huh. another color? Yeah. That looks cool. 
So that's one project. And then my other simple project is another linen stitch project, which makes me think that I'll definitely need to switch up the stitches for the baby blanket. And I'm just using, just doing a linen stitch cowl because I didn't know what else to do with this yarn. So this is the yarn that you bought me. It's the hand painted or hand something. Is it the alpaca socks? No, it's it's oh 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 oh, oh the 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 um the one that I that I bought yeah I remember now it's um Cascade Yarns yeah. Heritage Silk Paints mm-hmm. that's what it is so it's it's what merino and silk maybe I don't yeah remember. merino and silk fifteen percent silk um but because it's you only have one skein well I, yeah I only have one skein which I think is I could probably do two cowls out of it but also because it's what, what what kind of color is this? It's like it's a, not speckled. Like a plum. It's not very... No, no, no. Like the the nature oh, of like it's, the um, like coloring. petal dyed. Mm. I just wasn't really sure what crochet project to do with it because I didn't want to get like I'm not really a fan of certain color pooling. Mm-hmm. Is it pooling? Uh, it was it probably will to an extent. But I think it shouldn't be too bad. It should look decently random. Mm-hmm. Wait, the pa- the the pattern that you picked? I'm just doing it's a actually a shawl. Color. The pattern that I picked? Am I looking at the wrong thing? Oh no, never mind. I skipped ahead. Keep going, sweetie. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm just doing a linen stitch cowl. So that's another simple one to bring as well. And actually, it's been good for work because it's just one one thingy and I can do it at lunch. And then the big one, the one that's complicated and I've already had a bit of drama over. <laughs> More drama? Is, <laughs> there's, always, there's always drama. I, I don't know why. It's partially because I'm extremely indecisive. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> so I'm doing the uh, Luteola stole. L- L- Ludiola? Yeah. Something like that. Anyways, it's called that because of the Ludiola, no, Xantho Gallaruca Ludiola, <laughs> commonly called the elm leaf beetle. The what? Because they, elm leaf beetle? Okay. Like a bug. Uh-huh. They, they feed on elm leaf tree, uh-huh. elm tree leaves. Uh-huh. Um, but they, so that the leaves look kind of skeletonized because it just leaves the sort of veins Mm -hmm. of the leaf. So obviously it's, it's not bad for the trees. (laughs) Yeah. It's a bad thing. But that's what the stole is named after because so the pattern, it's like a leaf motif Mm -hmm. leaf, but also like kind of looks like a braid the way the leaves. Yeah. Or even if you, even like a a knit stitch, (laughs) Oh, like a giant yeah. knit stitch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it, it's like that. But so there's four sort of braids, as you were, whatever, braids. Mm-hmm. Um, and then one of the rows of leaves holy. is holy, and it looks like filet crochet. So that's, I guess, where the name comes from because it looks like the eaten up leaves. Ah, oh, I see, I see. Yeah, but it I, it looks oh, <laughs> so I I saw this pattern a while ago. It's a Quince and Co pattern by Rebecca Velasquez, and from 2016 they did a little digital booklet of crochet patterns, which is kind of nice. And it's really similar to another pattern by Emma Potter from. Potter and Bloom, is it her her okay. scarf is essentially braids. the same except instead of the four braids of leaves, it's three, and then it doesn't have the the holy one. Yeah, and I, so I like this one better because I think the holy the holy leaves I don't know gives it a little bit more texture, a little more detail, which is nice. The pattern looks beautiful. Yes, yeah, so, and so I, I bought the pattern. It's seven twenty dollars, uh, and it's it's 
The rivalry is six dollars. Oh, mine says seven twenty. Oh, I don't know, but I I bought the whole ebook for all five patterns. Mm-hmm. And yeah, so the pattern itself is is nice that they do in the in text, but there's also a chart. So I've just been following the chart, but still messing it up. Um, I so I swatched. I managed to get the gauge. Well, the first time I did it, I was I didn't have enough rows. The second, and then I carried on, but made sure to lift my hook quite a bit and just mm-hmm. do it much more loosely. And I managed to get gauge spot on. I don't know if my yarn, it says it's a fingering weight, if it's slightly thinner than the one that they've used, but I didn't really like how much space there was between all my stitches mm. at the correct gauge. So I, I'm not going to worry too much about crocheting really loosely to get that gauge because it, the pattern just repeats really. So, oh, well, and it's I very, mean, it's a very it's, big s- stole. It's very so, long. Yeah, where gauge, it doesn't matter too much. I was looking at the ebook. I really like the Leilani. Mm-hmm. It's got these little, they almost look like slubs on a, like a, a silk fabric. Sometimes you have that, I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, you yeah, like saying? where, yeah, there's like a bit of, like a ridge or a bit of yeah, texture. Like that. that one was and very nice looking. It is nice. And it's crocheted. It's all crocheted. It's crocheted. That one mm-hmm. doesn't really look like it's crocheted from, from far away. I think it also depends on the... Well, they're all fingering weight, too. Yeah. Right? All the patterns in the... From what I can tell, yeah. Might be. Yeah, I think they, they, they are. So, so yeah, the, the problems I've been having has just been thinking I've got the pattern in my head, but then missing something, and then realizing th- after I've passed that row and, and having to rip back and, and all that sort of thing. And I've, I've made a very slight change where in two rows of the one, two, three, four, five, six row repeat. I've just added a couple extra chains. Mm-hmm. I keep forgetting that I was doing that until I get to the next row. I'm like, ah, oh, didn't add that extra chain. And as well, because I'm using hand dyed yarn, I'm alternating my, my skeins. Uh-huh. And so I've got three skeins, which is handy because so I'm I'm used working all three at once. Oh no! <laughs> so I keep tangling myself, and I, and I not only am I making sure to you know put all the, not tangling them, but then it's just every time I rip out, and then oh my gosh! So I'm having to be extra careful there, and it doesn't the yarn doesn't frog super well. It's it's very loosely applied, but this is the yarn that I've been waiting to use, and I bought this yarn specifically for this project oh, really? last year at EYF. It's the, it's Skein Queen Enchant, which is 70% alpaca, 20% silk, and 10% cashmere, and it's like the softest thing ever. <laughs> it's like butter. Mm-hmm. Let me see the color again. It's sort of a... I don't know if I remember. Was it the one that was... It's a very or... neutral shade. It's very like a like a dove gray. Mm. Um, and so I've got my, my gauge swatch, and it it kind of looks like someone has dribbled bits of like oil on it or something because uh-huh. there's just spots where it's a little bit darker yeah but but in a good way <laughs> yeah like like <laughs> that's just the way the the color the coloration with different colors sort of works out i think it i don't know if it'll be less visible once it's sort of broken up in the leaves because obviously my gauge swatch is just a solid bit of fabric and it obviously would look a lot different if it were knitted and stuff I definitely, I definitely appreciate the way, you know, different color and yarns work up better in knitting, I think. Mm -hmm. Versus the crochet. I wonder if, are there any, like, crochet-specific yarn dyers? Yeah, so, I can't think, I don't know if it's Little Bean Loves, her yarn, potentially. Maybe, Maybe I'm completely lying, but there's definitely at least one Etsy seller hand dye yarn that I 
have heard of or someone's mentioned who is a crocheter so she specifically is thinking about crocheters when she dyes her yarn i wonder what like what the formula is like how, how... i think speckled yarns work better like oh, if really? it's mostly one color but just like bits of speckle mm-hmm. just because you don't really get the problem of color pooling with that mm-hmm. but so it's like i can imagine because obviously my my swatch is in double crochet which is what's calling causing what looks like splodges of color because uh-huh. it's got quite quite a lot of height so the darker bits of color take up maybe two or th- two and a half stitches whereas if you were to knit it they would be like little zips yeah right uh-huh. like within a row little lines yeah instead of like chunky oh. anyway so that's that's what i'm working on now oh, uh quite a lot I, i'm keeping my three different skeins in three different sock bags that three different sock bags that you have gifted me uh-huh Nice. My Star Wars one, <laughs> my Woodland Creatures, and my TARDIS, Exploding TARDIS. <laughs> <laughs> you need any more bags? Uh, sometimes I think I do, but no, I think I'm, I think I'm good. <laughs> I'll, I'll, bring, I'll make sure I bring some to you. <laughs> well, I only have one whip this time. I seem to be pretty monogamous, same? yeah, lately. Your, your Zweig sweater. My Zweig sweater. And I am a little further along in the body but this part of this the knitting is definitely taking longer because i mean it's it's not a very complicated stitch you, you knit knit a few rows of stocking it and then and then there's three rows of pattern that's very easy to memorize but mm-hmm. then sometimes when you're doing the stocking it you just keep going it's like oh wait i've got to <laughs> they get the root back i've got to do the pattern <laughs> but i'm probably almost down to the waist Mhm. So it's it's coming along. I did have some trouble. Uh, I forgot to mention last time when I had to divide the yoke for the sleeve separation. Mhm. I I ca- I I look back at the pattern. I don't know if it was something I did wrong, something wrong with the pattern. I couldn't figure it out. But where they had me divide the sleeves would have been like one of the sleeve would have been because there's um okay let me start over in, in the pattern there are short rows for the back for the back neck to make the back of the neck higher right okay, okay? and then um after you're done with those short rows you you know you, you're just pretty much going around and around and around in a circle with the pattern and blah 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 and then you get to the shoulders and then you have to divide for the sleeves and how it was making me count out which which stitches were going to be for the front, which for the sleeves, the sleeves would have been would have come out of the chest in the back. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> because just based on where, based on where the the short row was, because one of the sleeve was where the short row side was, and like that didn't make sense. So I had to redo the math in my head and figure out where to position the the sleeves and stuff. So I still haven't figured out if it was something that I did wrong. Like I, I didn't put, I didn't move the beginning of the end, end of row marker. Was I, I feel like it was probably something that you did wrong considering there are over 3000 projects. I know. <laughs> so I'm thinking <laughs> I probably did something wrong, but then I can I keep looking at it over and over again and I can't figure out where, what I missed. So <sighs> that's my drama but it's it's still it's coming along I'm, I'm very very pleased with with how with how the two colors are work, working with each other and i can't wait to finish it so it's, it's a it's a light purple and a blue a light purple and a a gray with blue and green and purple speckles okay i i feel like that those colors are chameleons every time i see it it looks Diff, like more like it? a gray or a blue or a some some. Well, it's definitely um on the muted side. Like the purple isn't a bright purple. It's definitely a more muted mm-hmm. purple. Uh huh. Hopefully, maybe I'll finish it for EYF. Yeah, you can do it if you're down to the waist. You said. 
Well, almost. But then there's the sleeves. You can do it. <laughs> I believe in you. There's other things I want to do. We'll see. So that's my only whip, and I, I don't have any FOs. That's do you okay. have I feel FOs? like I, 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 I do. Uh, speaking of EYF, this is sort of like I'm going to call this my EYF mermaid shawl. So I finished my temperamental artist shawl. It Yay! looks fabulous. So this was, it's by Cat Golden. It's in the Crochet Project, one of their shawl books. I bought that pattern at EYF 2017, and then I bought the yarn 2018, and now I've finished it so I can wear it at EYF 2019. <laughs> um, so that's why it's Two years of making. The, the colors that look, does look very similar to the colors of my sweater on the screen. So this so so yeah so the colors it starts off the light so 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 what 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 okay <laughs> um the idea with this uh pattern and the, all the patterns in this particular uh book is that it uses mini skein ombre sets mm -hmm. so it's meant to have an ombre effect and it either goes it starts from light and then it goes dark and then it goes light again. At the tip of the triangle, or dark to light to however, dark. Yeah, however you want yeah. To so I've I've changed it instead of going back to the beginning. I've just gone light to dark mm. because the way the way it worked with how many rows there are or rows of shells, there was a nice steady transition. But then towards the end, you skip out some colors to get back to the beginning. Mm. So it it goes more quickly with. Yeah, so my last rows, I switched between, instead of, I didn't have enough yarn to do darkest color for each of the rows, I went back from the darkest color and the second darkest color, but they're very similar in in the yarn pack. The Julie A Aslin, 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 I don't know, Aslin, um, in Goodnight Moon, I think, is the, the, the set. It's interesting because the, the set itself, it does have a nice ombre effect, but it's it's not perfect. The The lightest color has a lot of sort of vibrant blue speckles in it. And then the next color, it's just really washed out. And it's it's almost lighter than the first color, the first one, because it's so much more unsaturated, mm -hmm. the actual colors. And then the next color is definitely darker, but it goes back to being quite saturated. It kind of reminds me of a butterfly wing. I feel like it, it just reminds me of lots of things. Butterfly <laughs> wing, fish scales, um, or mermaid scales. Especially mermaid since scales. you're holding it up like that, like the shape. Oh, I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> you have it just um, over one arm. Yeah. So, I don't know what else to say about it. The, the pattern's really easy to follow. I had some problems with Would gauge, I be able to follow it? Before. Uh, yeah, I think so. If, yeah, because you've done Tunisian crochet now. Yeah, I have. And yeah, I don't know if you'd Tunisian. like it, but <laughs> <That's> <laughs> I think you'd be able to follow it. I was going to say, that would be a different story. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, I I'm pretty much like bang on the measurements for the finished size. But that you said, but what, what is the, the gauge? Is the gauge So right? I'm, uh, I don't, I don't really know. I haven't gone back to check. Just because I, I I feel like I still have my gauge swatch that I did, which has crocheted much looser with a bigger hook, and that I got gauge or it was even it was smaller than the gauge. Mm -hmm. So I thought, but then I I ended up having to crochet much tighter to get to the finished measurements. So mm -hmm. I don't I don't really know what's up with that. I guess that's the the only thing that I I had difficulties with, mm -hmm. and it was really only a problem because I ran out of yarn the first time trying mm -hmm. to do it. It's um, beautiful. I love it. I would wear that. Uh, I'm I'm actually so happy. <laughs> and like I w I've worn it to work this week on uh -huh. Monday and Tuesday, and some of the people at work have noticed. Like, oh, you finished it! I'm like, yeah, I did. <laughs> and I, I know they're not as excited as I am, but it's like, oh, look. <laughs> um, the, the only thing is, so once once it's been blocked, the 
I, I posted a picture of the unblocked version and you can definitely see that there's like noticeable ridges yeah. in between all the shells. And so that's nice and flattened out. The only one that has really to, flattened did you, out. Did you have to pig pin the heck out of it to get that? No, ridges out? no. not really. No. Well, that's the good. only thing is the first row, I don't really have a straight edge. Um, it's a bit wavy, kind of like mm-hmm. the top of the wave being the middle of the shell. Um, because you have to do the first row of shells differently than the subsequent rows because the first row of shells is, you know, it's not built on top of another shell in the, the sort of yeah inside the V of the shell underneath it. Mm-hmm. So it's, I almost feel like the shell is too large. Like it's, it's more than just a semicircle. And so I've got a little bit of extra puckering there, which is causing the wave. But I really don't care because it's so beautiful. <laughs> It's like a. It goes from like a light blue to a, a sort of like petroly purple, like a deep petroly sky, purple. Sorry. You know, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> like an eggplant? No, darker. No, it's like a. I don't know. It's just. It's just. It's just really nice. Right. If I do say it's so beautiful. Myself. I love it. You make me one too. Okay. <laughs> I would make another one, I think. So I, w- I would definitely recommend this pattern. I'm so glad I've made it now because this, this is the pattern. Um, that's the, wa- that's that the reason I... why you bought the whole book, right? Is that yeah, yeah. I, cause I saw the sample hanging up and, and I just had to buy it. And, and now I finally made it. I'm so happy I could cry. <laughs> <laughs> it does look fabulous. Congratulations. Thank you. Right. So that's all our projects. And if you don't have an FO. No. Hopefully, hopefully I'll have something next time. Okay. So what we do have, though, for more crafting fun, is a cow to announce. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> so do you want to say what the cow's going to be? It's going to be a color work. Cow? Cow. 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 Knit, knitting or crocheting along. Mm-hmm. And the dates we were thinking is are from February 9th until April 22nd. So that'll give you... 6th. 26th. 26th, sorry. That'll give you two and a half months mm-hmm. to work on something. So maybe yeah. something small. I already have a whole bunch of things that I'm thinking of. But maybe uh, we'll make a bundle or whatever in, in Ravelry people can add to but basically i thought we should do a color work cow because just to embrace the fact that you do so much color work <laughs> <laughs> do um, i do a lot of color work i think so yes okay. yes the answer the answer the answer is yes <laughs> I'm, I, I'm just thinking of mittens that you've done uh-huh. hats sweaters yeah you do a I lot guess. of color I, work I, yeah, I do like to, a good color work sweater. Are those all the same types, like types of color work, they're, in terms of technique? Yes, they're the ones that I've done recently are all stranded. What other sorts of color work would you be able there to do? There is intarsia, which you you said you've done in. Is there intarsia so, in crochet too? Yeah, there is. So what does, it, does that mean? It's what is that? I don't actually know what that means though. So <laughs> intarsia is. Usually if you have like big blocks of color, like like a big teddy bear in the middle of a chest, right? Oh, and it's okay. usually right. sewn okay, back and forth say. and not in the round. Okay. So you would pit, you would sew up to the, like if it was a pink sweater with a brown teddy bear, you'd sew pink, 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 pink to the teddy bear, switch your yarn, and then sew brown, 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 brown. And, and when we you, knit. What did I say? saying so. Oh, so. I'm, yeah. <laughs> I mean, knit, knitting round until you want to go pink. And then you have another strand or another ball of pink. And then you sew that to the end. And then you okay, come around. Right. Yeah. Yes. Even though I've done intarsia crochet, that didn't really. I think when I started doing it as well, that, that first one, I didn't realize that that's what you were meant to do. I mean, I figured it out, obviously. But. Right. Is there any anything else? Oh, there's like brioche where you do, um, it's like you're, <laughs> it, it's a different kind of color work where, where it's, it's like double sided and the back and the front are interconnected. It sounds kind of like you're doing double knitting, but you're not. 
Uh-huh. And you, so that you there's brioche knit uh, not knitting, crochet as well. Uh-huh. There's um well with double knitting, which I've done more of is when you're uh knitting something usually in the round. I don't know if you, I, sh- I don't know if you can do it flat. And what you're working on in the front, there is a negative in the back. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. So it's it's double sided. I, mean, I don't know how it works, but yeah, that makes sense. It's, it's double sided. So uh-huh. if it was like if it was a black background with white polka dots in the front, in the back it'll be white background with black polka dots. So does that does that have a name? Yeah, it's called double crochet. Oh. Adult double knitting. knitting? <laughs> Crocheting, <laughs> double knitting. It's called double knitting. Uh, okay, right. And, so uh, any of the above techniques would be allowed. And then for any crocheters, I feel like it's a bit more open-ending ended. You could do any of those sorts of crocheting that is like your your knitting color work, but the crochet version. But I think we'd also accept stuff like C to C. A lot What's of C to C gra- corner to corner gra- stuff has what about granny squares. Yeah, yeah and I would say even granny squares that have like multiple colors in, or like a something where you're changing the color for each row, like just something that has multiple colors. Okay. Worked in it. What about stripes? <laughs> Knitting stripes. Yeah, sure. Okay. Would so you not normally count that as color work? I mean, I, I, yeah, I suppose. <laughs> I don't suppose you would count it. Yeah. But if you really thought about it, you're like, oh, actually, that (laughs) would sort of be. (laughs) Okay, we're going to count that. Yeah. So any sort of color work just to encourage people to try something different as well. Do you think, are you going to do your normal stranded color work? Are you going to do something different? Um, Have I just pressured you into doing something different? (laughs) Maybe. We'll see. We (laughs) shall see. But... (laughs) Um, the next episode we'll talk have to talk about it. Um, I don't know what I'm gonna do now. Now that kind of, I'm definitely not gonna do stripes because that doesn't really count for me. I don't count yeah. that. You're too advanced. <laughs> <laughs> um, maybe I'll do some double knitting. But the last mm-hmm. time I did double knitting, it was double knitting and fingering weight, and I told my friend, "If I ever do this again, shoot me." <laughs> <laughs> So maybe double knitting in like a worsted weight would be a little bit better. I don't know. We'll uh-huh. see. <laughs> okay. So we're we're gonna. I'll say one. Blah, 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 blah. Whips will be allowed. I don't think we'll specify like what percentage of the whip you're allowed to have finished by when the cow starts. But as long as, as, long as you haven't off. finished, yeah. <laughs> as long as you haven't finished the project on February ninth, the start date. Should be fine. <laughs> yes. And we'll think about prizes. Cool. Yep. Any, any, any shop talk? I do have shop talk. I've been working on a new bag that I'm calling the Olivia Sacks or Olivia Bags. Uh huh. And, and speaking of color work, they're perfect for color work. Oh my god, it's like we did this on purpose. <laughs> we didn't actually do this on purpose. It's a great thing. <laughs> well, I you know, because I have been doing color work lately, um it, it's been in my mind. Sometimes like when you have um I have my the large bags that I make, the Madeline bags, they have little yarn keeper pockets in there that keep mm-hmm. your so if you're doing color work it keeps keeps the 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 yarn balls from rolling around and mm-hmm. or yarn cakes from collapsing too much or, or or you know but sometimes when I have a smaller project I don't want to carry around the big Madeline bag I just want to use my medium bag or even my sock bag so and then when you have two two balls of yarn in it they get jumbled around Tangle? and, and tangled yeah. uh-huh. so these so these these bags. I'm selling them in sets of two or in pairs, and they're nylon inside and out. They have a, a little uh, elastic closure, and you can keep your yarn in it. It also keeps your yarn cakes from collapsing when you get to the end. How's it do that? 
you know how you have a big, big yarn cake that you wound up on the yarn? Yeah. And then sometimes when you're, when you're working middle. from the inside, yeah. when you get towards the end, it starts collapsing, right? So, yeah. and, then it, and, this, and then when it's, <laughs> it starts collapsing, it just kind of get jumbles around in the bottom of your bag and it gets tangled with everything else. It doesn't actually mm -hmm. keep it from collapsing. It just keeps it from tangling with everything else. So it keeps everything right. all contained. It's all contained, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. So, but, yeah, and, and that's what I have. <laughs> I lost my train Very of thought. Nice. <laughs> so that's the, the new Olivia bag. Yes. That you've designed. I just, I designed it. I, and I, they, it's gone through many renditions. I had like square bottoms, square tangle bottoms, and I finally uh, decided on the round bottoms, which are, you know, a little bit fussy to Fiddlier. deal with when you're, mm. when you're not knitting them. <laughs> when you're sewing, <laughs> when you're sewing them. them. <laughs> <laughs> so I had a practice on a lot of bags. So I have a lot of uh, prototypes that I'm giving away to my friends. <laughs> because I just nice. kept messing them up, so um, <laughs> now I'm good at it, and and they're they're the perfect size for a big ball of yarn. You can, obviously, you could put a smaller ball, ball of yarn in it too, mm -hmm. and they're good for travel. Yeah, like just travel storage. Yeah, in like you put non yarn the cords, travel, like your um, chargers and cords, stuff like that. But it'd be good for like even like makeup because if if something spilled out. Yeah, and it's, would that wash easier because it's the nylon? Yeah, it will keep no? it contained too. It won't uh, come out. It's explode everywhere. It's not quite waterproof, but it is definitely water resistant. Right. I need them for my. I'm not that I'm doing color work, but for my three balls of <laughs> the skin queen stuff for the. <laughs> yeah, maybe I'll I'll bring some in two months. <laughs> okay. So yeah, that's what I've been busy with. Yes, and just. We we're not very good podcast hosts, but just just for anybody who doesn't know, we're talking about my mom's Etsy shop, which is called Pearl and Plum. We've not managed to say Pearl and Plum <laughs> this whole time. <laughs> Check right. out Pearl and Plum on Etsy <laughs> for all your knitting project needs, <laughs> knitting project bag needs, <laughs> and crochet. We need a script. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we wouldn't be as funny if we had a script. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Um, well, speaking of script, I can say my, my end bit. That's a script. Are we ready for the end? Because uh, well, you have it memorized. No, have it I don't have it memorized. I read it out every time. Oh, really? <laughs> I didn't know that. I well, not, not, not like word for word, but I've, I've got <laughs> just to remind myself. Okay. Do your, do your bit. <laughs> okay. You can find the show notes for this episode and every episode on our website, which is kcacypodcast.wordpress.com. Follow us on Instagram. Our Instagram handle is KCACY Podcast. Or you can follow my personal Instagram, which is Allison here. My mom's personal Instagram is upstate underscore viv. Uh, subscribe to us on iTunes or wherever else you're listening or on YouTube. And join our Ravelry group. Just search Keep Calm and Carry Yarn Podcast in the group tab. Thank you for listening. And remember to keep calm and carry yarn. And check out pearlandplum.nc.com. Thank you.